Right, well, fantastic. Right, uh, welcome everyone to Future Work Scotland. It's wonderful to be back. Uh, 2023, happy new year to you all. I think it's just about okay still to wish everyone happy new year. I think it probably stops when you move into February. That tends to be my my uh, my rule of thumb. You've probably got your own your own one. But uh, yeah, if this is your first time with us, very warm welcome to you. If you've been with us before, welcome back. I'm Sathpal Singh. I'm your host for this session. I'm joined by Donald Henderson, who's my co-host and co-organiser at Future Work Scotland. Uh, just the usual formalities. Uh, we have a very simple code of conduct to be simply ask that you be respectful to one another and everyone to have a, a great time and enjoy themselves and, and, and lots of stuff and have great fun. Uh, that's always our objective here. We'll do some usual community shout-outs, etc. at the end, tell you what's coming up. We're starting to build a programme for 2023. You might have already seen that in, in Meetup. If not, we'll give you a little bit of a taster of what we've got coming up and also what else is in the pipeline. Um, and with that, I think it's uh, should move on to the to introductions. Uh, I'm thrilled to, to welcome uh, Joanne Stone to Future Work Scotland as our opening guest speaker of the 2023 programme. I was really keen to, to get Joanne along, um, A, because um, we've become pretty good friends over the last wee while. We met uh, last year at Nigel 2022 in Nashville. It's fantastic. And Joanne was part of an incredible keynote panel session around, well, the very topic we're covering today, uh, planetary challenges, and that was hosted by Lisa Atkins. Uh, Joanne was one of the panelists alongside Sally uh, Alata, I guess uh, uh, each Dean and a whole bunch of other amazing people, and they were talking about all kinds of incredible things. And it really caught my attention, and it did of many of the people who were there. It was, you know, it was a huge um, auditorium. It was packed, and I think everybody really, you know, started to get a sense of the the challenges that we must all face collectively. Lisa did an amazing job of facilitating that session and Joanne and others have gone on to continue to fly the flag and champion all the, the work that we're doing in this space. Uh, Joanne's got huge amounts of experience in Agile and Agility. She's been doing this stuff a long time, a longer than she probably care for me to mention. She's an enterprise coach, an Agile coach, an entrepreneur, a keynote speaker. As I say, I was lucky enough and privileged enough to here as part of that panel discussion, and she's done several others. Um, and we're delighted to have her here today to kick off this year. She set the scene for what I think is a hugely important topic around global challenges, climate action, we all need to take, and a whole bunch of other things which are relevant to us all. Uh, and what part does agility play in that? So without further ado, I'm, I'm going to hand over to Juan and then let her... Uh, take forward the conversation. Welcome. Well, thank you, Seth. That was just delightful. It was a delightful uh, um, opening and introduction for me. I really, really appreciate it. And yes, um, it was just wonderful to actually uh, meet with you at Agile Alliance and to see, you know, where that kind of, uh, where it's grown to and where we are now today and being here today, which is just, it's, it's, it's awesome and exciting. And uh, yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't know if the first place I met you was in a bar. <laughs> I was like, was it a pub? <laughs> it was. Yeah. Uh, so it was kind of it was interesting. I think that was probably the first place, right? Versus in the in the conference itself. But uh, such a delight, such a delight. And thank you, Donald, too, as, as well, for helping arrange and organize this. And thank you guys uh, for allowing me to join your community to share this amazing topic. Um, so, um, I have a presentation deck. I usually like to go deckless, but, um, I, I think it's important to kind of share a lot of the information that I have here. Um, and so I'm going to share with you, uh, a bit of a story, um, and a bit of a journey and where, what's happening. Let me just, um, sorry, where are we? All right. Share button. Oh my gosh. I'm going cross-eyed. <laughs> so many things are happening all at the same time. There you go. Okay. Can you guys see my screen okay? Seth, you're the first one up. I can see. Okay, great. So thank you. Um, so um, Seth, uh, Seth did talk about a few things that I do. I actually am a founder of a, um, a mentorship program within the Toronto area that's actually mentored over 500 people. 
Um, and um, so as well as as um, a founder of what's called Wicked Agility. Um, but I'm not here really to talk about Wicked Agility as much as I'm here to talk about um, a talk of, talk about agile and planetary uh, challenges. So, um, and that's what I want to uh, spend some time talking to you about about my journey, um, what my vision is, the high dreams, some of the some of the discoveries and everything else that I've had over the last little while. Um, what I see is really lacking and what uh, we're actually doing uh, for 2023 and how you guys can actually get involved. Um, so I always usually like to start off with, um, you know, what are my fascinations? And um, other than the fact that, you know, um, I am a complete lover of nature. So uh, ever since I've been uh, young, every single blade of grass, every single bug, you know, and like every baby, every everything to me, nature, animals, creatures has always been something that I've been really quite fascinated about. Like people, I watch people, I don't know how many of you guys are people watchers, but I like watch people like crazy. <laughs> I'm watching them really intently. I'm listening to them all the time. So like for me, this earth, this planet, people, creatures and all that stuff has just been ingrained ever since I've been young. Um, and it's just popped back up into uh, now what I'm doing, you know. So I had to have a whole life full of everything else before I actually shifted back into the space that I love a lot. But let me start and give you some of the fascinations that I have. Um, I'm fascinated in wicked problems. And I'm going to talk about what a wicked problem is in, in a second. Um, I'm a massive, I love problem solving stuff. So, um, and um, I'm also fascinated in wicked leaders. So there's some phenomenal, amazing leaders that are out there that are wicked. And when I say wicked, by the way, this is the interesting term. Wicked, it can be mean good and it can mean bad or evil. And uh, I like the the term wicked, like uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, the wicked, yeah, that wicked kind of thing. So that's what that uh, wicked is. It's wicked excitement. It's 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 um it's it's a really strong passion uh, word for me. I also love uh, wicked teams. So um, this is where teams who love to work with work with each other, bond with each other, they understand how uh, they, each individual understands why they're on their team and what they're doing. And these particular teams really do make a difference. And uh, the last thing I'm really fascinated about is agility and wicked problems. So, and I, I like to talk about fascinations versus passions because fascinations for me is what I wonder about. I wonder how it works, how it ticks. You know, it really gets me going and energizes me to kind of learn more about. So let's let's talk about what is a wicked problem and why agility is so important. So uh, I'm not sure if, how, if many of you guys have heard of uh, wicked problems in the past. It, it, like it, let's hear from anybody who's heard from a wicked problem, or you can put it into chat as well. But uh, I know that this group loves to talk, so uh, <laughs> and we'll share their voice. But what what have you heard about wicked problems in the past? The definition of it. Anybody got any thoughts? Feel free to unmute or raise your hand if you want to let in or drop it in the chat. Yep. Well, you've got anybody in this group? All right. Intra oh, look, Greg's saying in intractable. Oh, nice. Intractable? I've not heard that. That's it. It's nice of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Yeah, so yes, that's a great, uh, that's, I'd like to hear a little bit more about that word. Um, but the definition that I have been using a lot of, it, it came from Alan Watkins and Ken Wilber. Um, and when I start talking about wicked problems, it's those wicked problems which, you know, have uh, many potential solutions, um, many potential uh, symptoms, and it, it has m many uh, or multiple causes. Sometimes a wicked problem is within a wicked problem itself. There's a lot of people who actually are involved. Um, it's multidimensional. Like it, it is, is something that spans across organizations and worlds. Um, and um, the one thing is, is it may never be solved in our lifetime, right? 
So, um, so these wicked problems um, are very much all in the land of the unknown, the complexity uh, space, if we're looking at the Kinefin model, right? And for me, when I started to kind of uh, started to explore wicked problems and understanding what a wicked problem was, I was going like, oh my gosh, you know, this is, this is the space that um, agility has been working in, right? We've been working in corporations and we've been learning and figuring out how to kind of do this, right? Um, and half of me kind of thinks that there is uh, something of, of greater uh, greater being out there than maybe, maybe what they're actually trying to do is prepare us for what's coming, what, for what's actually coming or for what is here uh, right now. So um, a lot of the stuff that, um, uh, so here's some examples of, of wicked problems. So, you know, poverty, climate change, COVID, women inequality, racism, diversity and inclusion, like it's social, it's economic, right? And it's climate and it's a lot more. And as you hear, you're hearing a lot more um, different um, understandings and different perspectives of what that means and what we're doing. And now you can you can feel and you can hear more of the governments are getting involved with what we need to do. And they're also forcing our corporations to start working on some of this, some of this as well. So, um, and there's different solutions and stuff like that, that that our corporations are actually working on um, based on different, um, different approaches that different people have. But this, this to me is, um, is very much in our own backyard and is something that we know how to do really quite well. And as one of the other uh, people that we have in our sp uh, specific group of leaders that are working with us in this whole uh, area, um, you know, sh what sh she's saying is we've got all the tools necessary. We do, right? We just have to kind of like start utilizing it in those specific areas and, and, and take that next step. So let me let me give you so Seth was just, you know, as we we're talking about um, coming here and he goes, Joanne, you give me your vision. What is your vision? I'm always a we person like, oh, we are doing this. We are doing that. But I really wanted to give you guys what my vision is. Now, this isn't 100 percent baked, but and I know it can be improved, but this is where what I'm trying to do. Right. I want to bring agility to the next uh, our next calling. Um, and um, so, oh, sorry, let me go back. I have to move you guys down the screen because I can't see the screen. Um, uh, yeah, so I want, I'm looking to bring agility to our next calling, which is global challenges so that we can accelerate impact in pace with the challenges we are encountering on our planet. And like I said, it's like 90% there. I'm sure I can make it smaller <laughs> and more concrete. But to me, that's what I'm trying to do, right? I'm always trying to raise the bar in something to, to push us to this next level. But this is the place that we're, we're starting in and where we're going into. So, um, and this is what I'm, I am trying to do with the work that I'm doing. Um, and we have an amazing group of people that are, are working on, on uh, pulling all of this uh, together too, which is great. So there's a group of us actually, um, which started last year. And um, what I started to do actually last year was uh, bring a group of leaders in this particular space and started to bring them together to actually understand like, what could we do in 2023? So we started to brainstorm back in um, in uh, November. There's a few actually here. So I know Christina is here and Seth. <laughs> and, um, and Joe's just recently joined us too. So we're just so excited to have all these great people here as part of this group, which is helping to kind of shape and form what we're doing. So, um, so here's some of the stuff that this group was saying in terms of what their high dreams and low dreams are for 2023 as we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do. But the high dream is in a year from now, we can light up the whole world with a map with all these dots showing all the places where Agilists are doing this work, right? And <clears throat> there are many communities and practices specifically around Agile and planetary challenges. So we wanna be able to do this more. 
Um, and not only that, we also help others do it, right? Um, we, as agilists, we create path patterns and pathways for other to fall, right? So maybe there's agile for disaster, disaster recovery, agile for X or for Y, but hoping that a bunch of this will become some sort of knowledge that's ca captured in a branch of Wikipedia. Um, but some of the low dreams are we dream too small, right? We think that we can't affect the big systems um, or affect orgs outside of our comfortable spheres or of, of influence. And uh, as a community, we can get stuck in a familiar pattern of connection, never actually moving into action. So we're inspired, but we're passive. So this is what this, this group of, and there's more high dreams and low dreams. I just pulled out a couple of them. But these are the things that this particular group is looking at. And I can tell you, I'm so excited that um, we're, we're sharing some of our high and low dreams together because it's really inspiring us to move forward and to take action. So here's some of the things that we're starting off with in 2023. Um, we are um, bringing um, together a group of leaders in the community to help bring uh, this, uh, uh, to help bring with this, this awareness and this impact. Um, and uh, I, I think Kaber, who's actually part of it too, I think he, he created the term, which is team agility impact. <laughs> So I love it. <laughs> I'd love to get the t-shirt uh, with it as well. Um, but that that is that is this team and it's just amazing. Um, and so some of the stuff that we're doing is we are bringing more awareness to the meetups, uh, to communities like this, conferences uh, as a group, as a team. Um, we're doing monthly community meetups. So I'll give you a link at the very end as to the next one. It's coming up next week. Um, we're also working on um, with Agile Alliance and Scrum and actually some of the other people that are uh, that um, we're aware of have actually started to work with XP um, and, and the conferences to actually have a whole track devoted to sustainability um, or uh, e or even just talks that are included as part of it. So one of the other people, one of the other members in our group, Pia, has actually influenced Sweden's uh, conference as well. So we can also have uh, a track devoted uh, uh, in there as well, so, which is really great. The other thing that we're working on is a two to three day uh, conference in May or June. Um, and the thing that uh, we're working on is mentoring groups of three to five people with uh, with their impact projects. So it has that has started within my mentorship program. And so I'm I'm, um, I'm going to start mentoring them and then uh, introducing that to the rest of the community so we can get that going. Um, so and there's others as we continue to keep going this, we're going to start bringing more and more awareness. The other thing is that I have to sit there and say that all the individuals that are uh, as part of this um, group that we're working with, you know, they each have their individual story, they each individual work that they're doing. So, um, so uh, um, there is a so social impact uh, agile that's that's happening as well with Rosedale, and we have lots of community leaders who are also working with us. So, um, Lisa Atkins is also uh, someone who's helping advise us on some of this work, which is really cool. So I'm really excited, really super excited for this year um, to bring more of this awareness and bring more of this impact into this particular space so that we can connect more of these stories. Um, so, but first off, I wanna ask the question of this, which is what brought you here? And um, so I have to, if you guys can, there, if you can put the link in the chat, or if you have a mobile app, you can actually click on that. Um, I'll give you like 10 seconds, and then I've got to start the poll. So I got to stop sharing the screen and then um, uh, get Mentimeter up and going. But right now, I just really want to understand what brought you here today. So I'm going to stop share and get the poll going. Everybody, everybody, everybody got a link okay. Sorry, yeah. Joanne. Did everybody get a link okay? Just checking. If not, give us a shout or let us know. Come on. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so I'm gonna sh share the uh so the, the link is actually in the um oh great, thank you. Yeah, put it in the chat. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're awesome. Um, okay, let me get into all screens. Yeah, 
You guys can see my screen, okay? Yeah, here we go. Oh, let's go into present mode. There we are. I think we'll see you in a bigger screen. Um, great. So we have curiosity, hope, the environment, environment, willingness to help, learning something new, wanting to make a difference, passion, social change, connect with like-minded people. It, it's really interesting to connect with like-minded people. There's a lot of people that are out there that are just, that have been doing it. And um, now more connections are being made. It's so beautiful. Annoyance, what brought you here is annoyance. <laughs> okay, that's welcome. Oh, annoyance is welcome. Um, interest, community. Great. Thank you. Um, so as I, I'll take to stop share because the fact that this, I can't get to uh, the PowerPoint presentation screen mode. All right, cool. So I'll let you know what brought me here. And um, really it's this uh, this amazing lady, Lisa Atkins. Um, and so um, in uh, 2020, um, Lisa and I were going to a retreat. <laughs> um, and actually the reason why I, I was going on that retreat with Lisa was because she said she's going to this thing and I went, oh, that sounds really cool. And she's like, well, you can come and I went, okay, perfect. <laughs> um, and so, so I went, okay. And I didn't know, I know Lisa, I knew Lisa before. I didn't know her extremely well, but we got to spend like four hours driving back and forth. And she started to share with me back at that particular point in time, what um, she was really interested in, what she could start seeing. Like during that time, um, actually it was 2020, not 2019, but during that time, um, I, there was an Australian fire that was actually happening um, and it was so devastating. And we were really feeling into what some of the issues and challenges were at that particular point in time. And her her vision at that point in time was being able to bring a connected community together of agilists who can work in that disaster field. And, um, and it was really kind of um, from her and my perspective at that point in time, we're like, yeah, we're really great. We can do, we can bring people together. We're really great at, you know, team building and um, holding space for others. We're able to take things in small little steps, you know, iterate and adapt. And so it was really one of these things where, yeah, sure, why not? We can do it in corporations. Why can't we do it in, in emergency situations as well? So it really got me thinking and it sort of like planted a seed in my mind. And so what I started to do, cause I, again, I have all these fascinations. So I got really curious. So I, I started doing a bunch of different interviews. So as I went through and I did interviews, so, so I've been interviewing people over the last two years. Um, and I started first with, with Lisa. So I brought her in so she can talk about the wisdom that she has. So she kind of like kicked us all off. And um, what what her whole thing there was just like, what can we do as Agilists? And she's like, oh, we can get together as, as a community to start figuring out how we can work together on supporting um, on supporting this this uh, the, the disaster related stuff. Um, and what and then uh, just to let you know, probably one of the fears I have is 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 in disaster. <laughs> and chaos right so when there's disaster and chaos and you know it just seems like things are out of control um it kind of it was really kind of scary for me to kind of work in that place although uh you know it's something that um i'm trying to work through um so that i'm able to kind of work work in that place as well i know i can do it it's just you know i think there's a lot of inner stuff that i have to work on so um, so one of the first ones I did, because I was going through my fear, it was talking to a 911 operator in disaster recovery, and her name was Heather Fox. Um, and she started to talk to us about, you know, how the disasters happen. And um, it actually made me feel a lot more comfortable because when these disasters actually happen and she sets up disaster centers, like, and she works in New York, so New York State, and you can just imagine how big it is and how how um, how busy it can be. 
um, in the New York State, when large storms come through, you know, they they have to set up these disaster recovery centers when there's big, big things that actually happen. And as she started to talk to me about it, she goes, oh, yeah, like we have this, 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 you know, we have these four steps or these, like they have steps, right, as to what they, they do first. It's just like first aid, right? You know, you first hit that person, whoever you touch first, you, that's the one you work on first, right, before you go to the next one, next one. So there's, there's certain ways that they go through and they attack the, the, the most critical problems first. So, um, so they have four easy steps, which is like, you know, basically making sure the roads are open, then they get the power on the communications. Like there's, there is a bunch of steps that they actually take. But what was really interesting was when she started to talk about the disaster center itself um, and in the disaster center, um, it was, they basically were a bunch of group, there's a group of people that are all very focused on something very passionate. Um, but one of the biggest challenges they have is actually they have like, there's a, this, 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 um, aspect of as a team, they work together really well, but it, there's like a sustainable pace, uh, aspect, which is they can get burned out really easy and they really need to take rest. And so they all have to kind of look after each other when the people that look after them most times than not are usually the, the 911 operators. They'll check on everybody and, uh, make sure everyone's okay. Um, and there is a person that heads up the whole room, but he's not caring about, you know, uh, how the team is working together. It, there's none of that. It was, it's, he's more about the disaster itself, but no one's actually holding space, uh, with the whole group, right? They're like basically in there to do that particular thing. So for me, when I looked at that, I'm going, oh my gosh, you know, we could probably do team agreements. We can, you know, do team coaching. We can mentor them. I'm sure there's a hundred things we can actually do in that particular space, but it made me feel a lot comfortable because I knew that they had their own process and procedure. Um, and then at, and at that point in time, I was going, yeah, I could actually work in a disaster uh, uh, recovery center. That wouldn't be a problem for me to do. Um, a couple of other stories that I thought was really cool. So when we talk about Agilists working in different spaces and what they're doing in their specific uh, communities, I, I got uh, the ability to talk to a great guy. His name is Ron Ladadio, um, and uh, he's from Newfoundland. And he actually brought in um, he brought in open space techniques into his local uh, community board. So they were having a big problem in terms of of, of working with each other and really listening to what the community wanted. They had a leader um, who was um, basically very much focused on what she thought was the best for the, the community itself. Um, and that was around um, getting more people there from a travel and tourism perspective. Um, and no fault, I mean, that's, that's where she, she thought that that's what she needed to do for their little community. But when Ron stepped in, he started to do like he did lean coffees first to figure out what was going on. And then all of a sudden he brought in like the open space. And what they actually found out was there was a store that was closing down and in their lo local um, in, in their local community. And that store, which is a grocery store, is the closest one. The next closest one is like an hour and a half away. Um, and um, the average age of the people that were there are like 60, 65, 60 years, 65 years old. And I think the average income is underneath 30. And so um, 30K. So in order for these people to drive that far away, uh, it was too costly for them. And then they're also quite older. So it's harder in the storms. And I know they have some big storms just recently. Um, so and actually as a community, the community finally got to be heard for what was really needed and what was really required. Um, and so Ron, you know, worked with them to um, get this open space. They figured out that the thing that they needed to do was set up the store. And that, you know, one of the ideas was actually the store was going to be led by the community itself. Um, so uh, Ron is actually, uh, he's continuing to work with the community board. And I think it's this week, the next step is for the board to actually run it themselves. So, which is, he says, it's the next experiment that he's doing, but it's really cool that he kind of went in there and he actually utilized his specific tools to actually work in that space, his local community. And the one thing that when I was talking to him is he's been inspired by all the stories that I've been sharing and we're all been sharing 
around what agilists are doing. So what we're doing is actually creating uh, uh, creating this uh, um, uh, um, sort of trickle uh, for others to start kind of inspiring others to start doing it too, which is really cool. I, I'm super excited. Um, a very, very strong leader in this space is Yuda Eckstein. She's been doing it for quite a while and she is amazing. I don't know, Seth, if she's got books that she's written to. She might have, I don't know. But she's been, she's very super passionate. She was actually one of the panelists that was with me, with us. And what she's been trying to do is bring sustainability into organizations and teams. Um, she's the one actually brought in uh, XP conference that's happening up. She's the one who brought in the sustainability track in the XP conference. So, you know, she's been critical in trying to get this movement going as well by herself um, and uh, and with others too. Um, and so what uh, sh the stuff that she's been doing is she's got like templates and um, tools that actually help people actually bring sustainability into a team. And, and it's part of their, um, their uh, team agreements and working agreements um, that she has where she brings it into it. And so from a sustainability perspective, she'll, you know, the team will look at, you know, in terms of if I'm developing a piece of code, if that code is taking up uh, more of a carbon foot or, uh, you know, how can I reduce that? So she's really kind of making sure that people are looking at or earth earth is another um or the planet is like a, a another stakeholder right um as part of uh as part of developing that particular product so they're always constantly thinking about that as they're working working on um it, as they're working as a team so it's really cool right so she's actually bringing it, it into the organizations itself and there's you just one um, there's a few other people who are actually out there. Sabine is another one who's doing it as well. So it's really cool to actually see how these guys are actually doing it. And so in one of the community meetups that we had, which was really cool, Yuda was there. And we had another community member who came in going, I, I don't know how to bring this into my teams. And she's so passionate to bring sustainability and the earth to her teams. Um, and so what she did, she figured out a way based on what you did, and she did something different as a retrospective, I think. And so she's going to be one of the next ones I interview in the next few weeks. So I'm just super stoked. Um, as I'm discovering all these things, I get really excited that these people are actually doing all this great stuff. And so, yeah, so the, we had some panelists, talker, panelists that have been on, but it's not about me as much as, you know, Kubert and the stories that he's doing and marginalization and, um, in the Middle East, right? Um, or Steve and the penguins that he he's trying to save in uh, South Africa. Um, so um, there's so many uh, stories and so many amazing people that are doing great things. And I know that uh, Seth was talking about the panel that we were at in Agile 2022, but Sally Alada has an amazing story about what she's doing in Sudan. If you've never heard it before, it is so cool. And new story is amazing in terms of what she's doing in South Africa. Um, and, um, and, and Pia, who keeps on saying she's just an average developer, but she's actually starting to try and expose more people into like going out there and finding the jobs that you want in this particular space. So amazing inspirational leaders who are out there that are doing some great things. And I'm so grateful to have connected to a bunch of them and I'm trying to connect more of these stories with others as well. So, yeah, so there's tons of tons of different people and tons of different groups which are out there. And here's a few of them which are there and there's so much more which are popping up. And really all I've been doing it, it, for me um, for the last couple of years is just trying to get all these stories to bring them all together. So it's so inspiring for me to see these people do what they do with the tools that we have. And they're not inventing anything new, right? They're going out there and utilizing a lot of what we have in these particular spaces to make the impact. So, but here's the thing that I've been finding, right? So my discoveries, when I've actually been going out to talking to different communities and, and, um, and to different people over the last two, a couple of years, but this is where I find um, where people tend to be in two different camps. They can be in the camp of it's daunting, it's doubtful, 
uh, you know, there's a disappointment or there's despair about what they can do in the planetary challenges, or they're in a camp, a, a camp of I'm in a deep desire, I'm discovering what I need to do, I'm distilling and figuring out how to do it, and uh, I'm or I'm doing it right. And so I'd love to see where you guys are as a group uh, itself. So if you could go to uh, that um, Mentimeter again and fill in the next one, I think I need to push the button to move it to the next one. Just a second. I think I can move it to the next one. Yes. I call it, where are you on the D scale? Um, so I'd love to, love to know where you're at, where you think you're at. And let me share the screen. I think you guys can actually see it on your mobile apps too, right? So. Share. Cool. I love this Mentimeter app because it has the little bubbles. You can kind of see what's going up. Um, so we have people who are in dis disappointment and, and despair. Um, and a, a bunch of people who are discovering, which is really cool, or just distilling, like what, what am I actually doing in this particular space? Yeah, wonderful. Okay. Um, so, what I I want you guys to do right now, and Seth, this is when we want to put them into breakout rooms. Um, and I want you guys to to if if you still have that survey and the survey results on your screen, um, maybe we can type this in. I forgot to actually add this in, but what I want you guys to do is I want you to uh, go into breakout rooms and I want you to talk about where you are in this particular scale uh, um, or what you think about, you know, what you're seeing in this scale. That's okay. If you don't want to talk about, you can talk about, you know, what you're seeing in this scale. Um, and I also want to, I, I want you guys to talk about um, like, if you're in, like, if there's a bunch of discovery and it looks like there's a bunch of discovery, which is there too. Um, like, what are you doing in this? What are you discovering? What are you finding out? Like, what is it in each of these diff different uh, uh, dots that you're seeing here where you guys are, are at? So just have a, a conversation regarding that. We're going to put you into breakout rooms. I think, Seth, if there's like three to five, it's fine by me. Okay. Um, and um, I would sit there and say, uh, if we can put you in um, for, um, let's say, 15 minutes. That would be great, yeah. Because it's not. Like, I'm, I'm just. I'm just gonna. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm, I'll create three rooms because that feels like you'll get a decent sized group. Okay. Um, so that should be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like to me, it's all about the conversation of. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll create some rooms. Open them now, folks. Thank you. Now it's for 15 minutes you, you're looking for. Yeah, 15 minutes, yeah. That's nice. I'll take I'll take you up to the hour. Nice, nicely, nicely done. Thank you. Do you want to stop your screen share just now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That helps that helps me too. Cool. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> So it's all good. Thank you. Nabula, Luna, I hope I pronounced that okay. Do you, want, do you want to join a room? Yeah, sorry. It? I think my Zoom was... Um, I did it? Okay. Uh, yeah, it says you've not joined. Fiddly. Yeah, that's all right. Well, I can move you to the room. It doesn't seem to be letting you into... Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Offer you three. Okay, thank you. Bola, would you like to join a room? Bola can hear us. Can you hear us? Bola, can you hear me? Okay, that's cool. 
I love the comments in here. It's just nice. What's that? I love the comments in here. What oh, in the chat. Yeah. Or in the Menti. Uh, in the in the chat. Oh, I love the comments in Menti too. But did I love you, the did stuff. You, I love the stuff you, in the chat. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pause the recording just now, actually, to invite them back. Thank you. Much for. Go back, folks. I'm just letting everybody start to come back in. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you all for coming back. This is just absolutely amazing. Here we are. Anyone want to share from their specific group, like, you know, what, uh, uh, just a couple of words or two as to, you know, what happened within their group discussion, anything you went, oh, um, <laughs> that got you interested, or yeah, if you want to share, I'd love, love to hear, or if you want to put in the comments too, it's fine too, but um, I'd love to hear some voices. I was in a group with Aline and she Sheila. Um, and we're from quite different geographic areas, so it was different kind of comparing notes on how certain environmental issues are tackled in those different places. So mm. Germany, UK and States. When you say it's, it's tackled different ways, what do you mean by that? Well, different levels of recycling, for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like hugely different, much better in Berlin. <laughs> In, uh, the UK or the States from the sound of things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Transport issues maybe as well, but the, like we discussed, they can, what's a good method of transport can depend very much on your circumstances and where you are and how things are set up. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's kind of a, a tipping point. I think uh, Aline and I are quite lucky to be living sort of cities where there are good systems of public transport. Um, and so maybe that's a lot easier than where Sheila is. It's, you know, it's, it's quite difficult to use public transport from the side of things. It, what's, what becomes really interesting is, is uh, as a community becoming aware that there's different, it's almost like an incorporation. <laughs> this group is doing this and this group's doing this and this group's doing this, right? Um, and, um, you know, if we're able to, what would we do, right? As agilists, right? If we see that and we want more of an alignment, right? Or we want to share practices or we want to do whatever. Um, do they want to do that? You know, there's all this other stuff. And I'm sure there's, there's, there's reasons where it's going to be great for them and reasons why they can't do it and all that stuff. And of course, that would be something that we can discover, but one of the things that I find, which is really interesting too, is I've been talking to some sustainability people who've been in the sustainability pace, this space for a, a while and how frustrating they are, frustrating they are because the way the people are thinking within the organizations are very much waterfall. <laughs> And it take there's a lot of bureaucracy. There's just people not collaborating with each other. There, it's just it's such an incredible mess. And so I've actually talked to one lady um, from Australia who left the sustainability business to go into the agile world so she could learn how to do these things so she could go back and take it back to the sustainability world, right? Um, so there is so much, so much opportunity that we ha uh, have as Agilists to kind of influence this particular space. So th thank you for, for talking about that. That just kind of inspired this other thought in me, which I thought was just amazing. Um, anybody else want to share back something, something same, different that was in your specific group? And thanks, Debbie. Don't be shy. I'm gonna pick on a person. <laughs> Greg or uh, Mark, is there anything you'd like to share? If you don't mind me um, picking on your name, sorry, Jim. Does or Greg? Okay, Greg is off mute. Okay. You mean me? Yeah, you. Is there anything uh, you like to well, share? Well, I. 
I, I will mention one thing I, I briefly got into in our breakout, which is that uh, new technologies may be uh, a great assistance. Uh, I, I believe, for example, mobile phones have been transformational in parts of the world where you wouldn't have expected it, like parts of Africa or India where farmers are learning how to use mobile phones in re really useful ways. Uh, that's one uh, that um, ways of ways of uh, communicating securely are really useful, and and that also hinges on uh, use of blockchain to make it hard to conceal or defraud, um, hard to be a crook, basically. I think a major part of the challenges we face in the world are, are powerful people being crooks. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't need me to mention any names. There's mm -hmm. far too many of them. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a total solution, but it may be some use, possibly, mm -hmm. if we learn how to use blockchain properly. I mean, I, I only have a hazy understanding of it myself, sort of basic grasp of what it is, not so much how to use it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's still early days uh, as a technology that we, you know, there's probably a few wrinkles to work out for it to be really useful. Oh, I, I, I didn't even think about that. I mean, that's, see, there's, that's just another beautiful use of blockchain. The, um, one of the things that uh, I'm, I'm getting involved in is uh, regenerative leadership, uh, which really sits in the climate particular space. And they do talk about, you know, um, harnessing the power of of our technologies as well. Like, why not, right? We don't have to push it away. There's some great stuff that's actually within it. Um, I guess it's just how we all kind of work together to make the best impact possible. So, and I, I love that about us too, because we're always continuously looking at new ways of working, right? And new ways of thinking. So, you know, Greg, you're, you're bringing up, yeah, well, why don't we start using something like blockchain, you know? So, we often will think outside of the box, which is again, uh, I think I'm in the most beautiful community in the entire world <laughs> um, because you know we're creative. We think outside of the box a lot, and um, you know we we make things happen, right? So um, I, I just it's just yeah. So thank you for that. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go back into the presentation deck. We'll go back into presentation mode. Um, let me go back here. Okay, we did that. Oh, okay. Oh, wait, Joanne. You know, if Joanne had technology, how would she do it? <laughs> Not this way. Just a second. I keep seeing the room. Okay. Um. Sorry, Seth. There I am. Okay, I missed the bar on the bottom. Okay. So, um. So we. So I just was I just want to talk about some of the other challenges that um, I've been seeing in, in terms of some of the conversations that I've been having with people. Um, definitely um, what I've been finding is there's a lot of um, people who, who or there's a lot of uh, I space or they're playing very small um, and there is not a lot of we space. So the we space is that it's funny because we're a really great community people. Um, but we're not actually uh, creating a lot of community in this space and we're really not talking about it as a topic as much in our agile space. So I find that and that's this is this this for me is like when I see these types of gaps, that's why I start building communities to kind of like try and figure out how we can kind of close this gap. But we're really great in the we space. We're amazing in the we space. And I'd love to be able to see us in that space as well. So um, here's what we can do. Right. So. Um, the thing that I thought I found really interesting with all the people that I interviewed is that there's a bunch of them that had this deep desire to do something in the planetary challenges area. So finding your deep desire is, was, is, is fantastic. So if you have that passion in a specific area, you're really fascinated in that area, that, that goes a long way in terms of the area that you're going to be going to, to kind of support and create Joe's into the green space, you know, which is totally different than what the space that Anu is in, you know, each of them have that particular passion as the space they're in, and then they can start looking for the areas that they want to make that impact. You can also work with others in your community. And just to let you know, I did talk to a specific community and, um, you know, there was an agilist that was in that uh, scrum master that was in that community that was having challenges 
with uh, a team that she was working with to save a forest in her in her local region, and the the team that she's working with weren't weren't able to co to collaborate with each other, um, and so um, and so what 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 uh, being a scrum master she didn't have enough um, uh, I guess experience in terms of team dynamics. So it was like okay, who on this team could actually who's an agile coach who can help right? So we as a community, our own communities and staff, this community here can help each other in this particular space um, in terms of uh, a project in your local community that you want to do. Um, and uh, I, I do know that your community is, has everything that's required in order to take on a specific project as a community, for example, itself. I would suggest talking more about planetary challenges as much as you can, like within your organizations and 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 even within these types of communities to see what you can start like working on and getting people more aware about it. Share stories and inspire others of as to what's actually uh, happening in this particular space. Um, and uh, and I'm sure there's other things that you can actually do as well. Um, and so um, here is the challenge <laughs> that I have for you, Sap and Donald. <laughs> I would really like it if you as a community can actually figure out a way to actually do a project in your specific group or team, right? Um, just one, just one, you know, if you have more than that's great. Like I know Sabine is actually doing this um, for, uh, for Germany um, and uh, for, it, it, it's, I think it's a scrum, uh, Scrum Alliance uh, was supporting her to do an impact project in her community group itself. Um, and um, so I, I, I'm, what I'm asking is, you know, why can't each community do this? And, and to tell you the truth, um, we're working with Agile Alliance. Like you're, you're, you have this big community. Can you guys do something as well? So we're actually working with them to kind of go, you know, help, help, you know, help get the communities to start doing this. And I think it kind of like starts small. And so we can start in our own little community so we can light up that board of world impact that we want and on the very first page. So you have the power. Here's the challenge. <laughs> I want to see you at the end of this year <laughs> and find out what you guys have done and then do a big celebration in terms of what that is. So um, here is some other information about me. Um, this is the um, Agility uh, Impact Community Meetup um, that we're having. We're having it on the 27th. Kubera is actually the one uh, who's actually going to be a, a guest speaker there. Um, so this is the first time we're bringing in guest speakers. Last year, we did some other stuff. We, we were just having a lot of discussions. Um, and we had a great World Cafe that kicked us off in September. Um, and then this year, we're trying to bring in different uh, speakers as well to share exactly the work that they're doing. Um, so you can join that particular meetup group. Um, but we're also looking at um, if there's anyone else that's out there that want to kind of help bring in more awareness or do some other stuff that um, our, our group is actually doing. If you want to, please contact me. Um, and if you want to be part of the team agility impact, uh, <laughs> that would be great. And then we can kind of take it forward um, and or contact me at, uh, at this email as well or just connect with me on LinkedIn. All right, so that's the end of my presentation. Um, and I just, you know, if you have any other questions, um, you can let me know. <laughs> Go on, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, we've got we've got about ten minutes, folks. So, yeah, oh, I, need, I only need a few minutes just to wrap up. It's a nice small group. So, yeah, feel free to you know join in on mute. You know, ask Joanne your questions, talk about your own experiences. I think what Joanne's suggested we look at is, is, is something that I think all, all, all the community should be doing. I think, you know, if we harness our collective power, you know, you just never quite know what we might achieve. So I see Joe smiling there. Uh, it's kind of like we, we do it. I know you're, you're, you're driving some good stuff here in Scotland, so that's great. So yeah, any questions for our, our guest speaker? Um, feel free to chip in. Debbie, you, you look like you've got something to contribute. Um, just to say, I think there's a group of people in my work who've been really interested in this one person in particular. So I'm going to point her in the direction of your Agility Impact Community Meetup. Um, so if you get somebody called Suzanne Maxted joining, <laughs> somebody appointed in your direction, she's very enthusiastic. Oh, um, that's awesome. 
<laughs> uh, I, I was a little bit unsure, Joanne, when you asked us to go into the group, so quite what the question was that we were supposed to be discussing and answering. Um, I think from what you said afterwards, it should have been about how does taking an agile approach help solve these problems? Is that the kind of question you were wanting us to think about? Um, well, it's actually interesting. I, I could have actually asked that question. I didn't. Um, I was more exploring the do's, the, the D's, right? So uh, what is it that, um, where are you at? Uh, where, where we are in where we are in, in respect deep, of what in the question are you in discovery in the discovery or are you in the discovery or are you daunting or are you in doubt or are you doing so where are you in that right and um yeah that was the question and just you know just talk about where you are and like maybe where you wanted to go um so that was that was the question i was asking yeah but it's a good question that you're, you're, you're talking about. Where can we see Agile in this particular space? It's another really great question. I'll ask people that the next time too. So thank you for that. Is there, How would you answer that question too, Debbie, you think? I'd love to hear what you'd say. I don't know. I'm a little bit, I get a bit frustrated with people kind of putting waterfall and Agile as two completely opposite approaches and waterfalls really terrible because I think bad waterfalls terrible, bad agile is terrible as well. Yes, true. And um, they, they both have advantages and disadvantages and a huge amount in common. Mm -hmm. So I think there are good things about agile, but a lot of them are things that are also good about waterfall and they're generally just good things in general. And um, yeah. But I, I don't know, I always feel like maybe there's something about Agile that I'm just not getting, that everybody else gets. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, Tommy, it's, a, it's, it, um, uh, it's the problem that I'm more, more it's like it's about serving the global challenges, right? Um, what we bring to it may be that we may need to better bring, we need to bring in a bit of the waterfall of thinking. We need to bring in a bit of the Agile um, behaviors, right? So... Um, the one thing that is a big difference for me, and this is the whole thing around wicked problems, is um, wicked problems themselves, you can only work on a wicked problem with a diversified team, right? It has to be a collaborative team. So it's it's not, it's there is no one specific scientist in the world or expert in the world that knows how to solve it. So, um, you know, waterfall will not help you with the wicked problems. It's more of a sense and adapt type of thinking, but it doesn't mean that each particular experiment that you're working on um, to kind of like to, to, I was going to say chip away, Seth, you're going to kill me. <laughs> he told me not to use that word. Um, the, the, one, uh, the one specific uh, project that you may do to kind of experiment on to figure out is this, this thing going to um, maybe perhaps reduce that particular sy symptom. Right, um, like what we've had with COVID, you know, we've we've had um, the um, uh, uh, all the vaccines which have come out, right? So it's only it's it hasn't it hasn't eradicated COVID, but it's minimized mi minimized the um, um, the impact of it, right? Uh, but it's morphed again. There's other stuff that's happening, but it's only small. But you know, what part of waterfall could have served that or could have been part of that? I don't know. But I think the thing is. It, what's really clear to me is we need to be able to we the the cool thing about Agilus is that we have this collaboration space that we space that the ability uh, to actually um, to, uh, help people in in changing the way that they're thinking from uh, from one way to the next, especially when we do transformations and we help people with it, we get them thinking different than they've ever done in in the past. So. Um, it really, uh, but for me, understanding that those two different methodologies, multiple ones which are there, is understanding where they're at, right? So, you know, scientists, um, actual organizations um, are, are, you know, they work, they may work in a waterfall way to, in order to get funding, for example. Funding is a big thing in some of the, the large, like FEMA, for example, in order to get money to help with a disaster recovery or support a specific group will require a bunch of money. It goes through this really huge process that was set about to kind of do that. 
But the thing is, that process in itself is actually impacting how quickly people can access funds to it, which means it access it minimizes the amount of time it, 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 for them to actually take action, right? Um, so uh, you're right that there is this aspect that there's, there's, you know, there's bad waterfall, bad agile, there's good, good parts of it. And then it's, to me, it's like, I don't care. Like I, I, there, it's, if it's a tool that we can actually use, start using it. Right. Um, um, but I'm not trying to, to say that agile is a civil bu bullet to this thing. It's not right. There's something that's there, but we need to kind of expand our way of thinking to take this next step to work with this challenge. Yeah. Sorry. I think it's good that you're just encouraging us to have a go. <laughs> that, uh, to me, We're never going to fix it if we don't start trying. Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> I, to me, it's like I was having a great conversation with my friend the other day about abundance thinking versus scarcity thinking, right? And the abundance thinking is we got to try, right? Scarcity thinking is no, no, I can't, you know, I can't. It's not going to work, right? We need to try. Right. Um, and yeah, thank you. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> That's what we're doing. I shouldn't just say I. Thank you. Any other questions? Hi, Stevie. That was great. Um, yeah, leaning in, leaning into the challenges uh, and tapping into our collective skill sets, I think is really what a lot of this is about. You know, we're we're we're, we're all doing a lot of interesting things and we'll obviously work together and collaborate and have really good skill sets. I think it's there's a real opportunity and a real need now to try to apply some of those skills to some broader challenges that are real um, and will continue to impact generations to come unless we do something about it. You know, you know what you, you hit on too is that there is quite a few of us which are trying to learn um, newer skills. Uh, in this specific area. Like there is like a few of us which are doing the regenerative leadership, um, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of us which are reaching out beyond um, beyond what we know right now in the agile space so that we can expand our knowledge to be in this space that uh, we are in right now and we're gonna head in towards more of. Um, so it's really it's really quite cool to see. But the thing is, I, I acknowledge too that I probably only know five percent of everything. <laughs> of course, you know, and I the only way that we can do this is together. And I love that the fact that you're saying that, Seth, because there's a lot of people out there that have some amazing skills, right? That we can do a lot of great. And so I know I can't do this by myself. There's just no way, right? That's why I hesitate to say it's my vision because I want it to be a you know. <laughs> But yeah. that is like what I'm personally passionate about. That's for sure. Great. Yeah. Well, we've got time for one one more question or comment or observation. Anything you like, guys. Don't be shy. Hmm. I love Aline. That's a great comment. Yeah. So in my group, Lena, not Aline. Oh, there's, thank you. There's two different, very close, similar names. Um, yeah. she's. I'm talking for you, sorry, but she's gone back. So she's a designer, UX designer, design thinking space. She went back to uni to do um, regenerative economics. Oh, wow. I think, was, I think it's really cool. That's my, <laughs> one of my things from this evening. So I don't know if you're still there, Lena. Do you want to take over from me talking about you? <laughs> That's so cool. Tell me where you're taking it. <laughs> Hi. Um, I, I didn't want to just plug my course and yeah, but I <laughs> I thought I would mention it. Yeah, so I I have been doing um, a regenerative economics course at Schumacher College, um, which is in partnership with the University of Plymouth. And I found it helpful because there's different areas that we were looking at. We were looking at bottom up, top down, um, not only um, economic financial flows but looking at regenerative agriculture looking at energy looking at policy and, and politics so it's it's quite varied um this is a shameless plug um right now uh, you can also um yeah just do one module as well so you don't have to do the whole course um that's also a possibility if you're interested um have a look at that i can um, share a link in the meetup uh, group 
people are interested. And Joanne, I'm really curious to learn about um, your regenerative leadership program that you mentioned, because I'm quite curious to, to learn more about that. Yeah. So, yeah, this is I'll, I'll be pinging you later. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, it, it's it's um, it's Laura Laura Storm, I think it is, um, who wrote the book. Ah, yes. Regenerative, yeah. she is a oh, whole. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. this so this is where we're we're starting to get into because we need to kind of har help support our leaders into this space that they're getting into because you know what the governments are telling them this the organ you know the communities are telling them that they need to be like this so they have to step into this brand new way of thinking, <laughs> right? Um, so that we can be in this world, right? So, and it's just, it's, and there's so many different things around sustainability, donut economy, there's tons of things which are out there, right? So it's really, really cool. And I can't pretend to know it all, but it's just, it's very neat. So I'm so excited about this stuff. You got me going, guys. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Yeah. It's exactly what I'm used to, you know, super enthusiastic, inspiring the rest of us. <laughs> Great. I think we're just about out in time, so I think I'm going to bring it to a close in terms of the questions. A few minutes for me just to wrap up. As ever, just first, just, just to thank you, Joanne, for, for joining us. Fantastic to have you here as a guest speaker. Always good to see you and spend time with you. <laughs> really important topic, um, which is why we're so pleased to have you open the year for us. I think it sets the scene. I think it's a big topic across many communities, many groups, uh, many organisations. My own organisation, we're talking a lot about climate action. We've got lots of ambitious targets. Lots of us are talking about sustainability and the need for greater sustainability. So it's all good stuff and hopefully lots of important, impactful projects and initiatives will come off the back of these types of um, gatherings. So yeah, thrilled, um, delighted, and uh, yeah, grateful for you joining us and uh, sharing your insights and inspiring all the rest of us. So keep up the good work, as they say, and uh, we'll uh, continue to collaborate on your, your agility impact project this year. So yeah, looking forward to how that all develops. So yeah, thanks again for joining. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for staying and uh, contributing, uh, participating and sharing your own insights. Um, we're delighted to have got the year off to such a good start. We've already got a number of things in the in the schedule for you. So as you can see, if you have a look at Meetup, really good stuff coming up. Uh, I think Donald mentioned earlier, our next one's actually an in-person, but it will be hybrid. Um, so we will we will live stream it, et cetera, but we'll be looking forward to that. And that'll be all about power connections with uh, Liz uh, Hoskin, who's a, who's a well-known uh, friend of ours, the Scottish community. I saw a comment about adaptability, which got me really excited because in March, we're going to have Ross Thornley come and talking about adaptability with this group. Uh, he's written an excellent book on that. And as you might have saw, we've also just launched our spring event, which will feature none other than uh, the one and only uh, Bob Gallen, uh, who's written an incredible book on agile coaching, badass agile coaching, as it's called. Awesome. Uh, he's badass. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's, uh, he, he, he's one of the best, and uh, he's going to be talk to us about the reality of what it's like to, to coach as an agile coach and what that really means and how everyone can be an agile coach and everyone is by the skill. So well worth checking that one out. And Donald and I have got a number of open conversations at the moment. So lots happening already. We're excited to be back. Um, thank you again for joining and we hope we will see you again soon. Uh, take care, um, enjoy yourself, stay safe and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you have to be. Uh, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks, folks. Thank Take you. Care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.